I think philosophy in general is all about coherence with life. And there's this old church father, Tertullian, that says, he asks this question of what does Jerusalem have to do with Athens? And one of the philosophers we often read is like, well, I'm a Christian, I, I live in Jerusalem, but I also live in Athens. And how do you bring that together? How do you make sense of that? Um, and I think philosophy in general is this attempt to sort of give coherence, to have a, a, a way of living that is obedient to both, both cities. One of the first things I say in class is, look, I'm not here trying to you know, market you to get you to become a philosophy major. That's not what this, this is about. What I, I am going to try to do is to convince you that having a certain sensitivity toward philosophy, no matter what it is you're doing, is going to be important to you. So, for example, you might say, well, I'm here to major in business. And I say, well, actually, what you're here is to be a human being who is a servant of Christ. And then you will now find that you turn that focus in the direction of serving in business. But don't forget your humanity, right? You're always a human being. In terms of serving, for example, it's a great major for, for pre-law students. Um, great, I, one of my best friends is, is a doctor. He was also a philosophy major. He says I wouldn't exchange that for anything in the world. Pastors, right? There's all kinds of people in so many fields that benefit from that kind of sensitivity. Because a lot of, any, anybody who needs to see a bigger picture, um, then philosophy can help to develop that. One of the features, and I do this both for the introductory class, which is really time consuming, but I love it, is I call them tutorials. What they really are is like oral examinations. And at first students are intimidated by this. They're scared, they're uncertain, but then they love it because instead of writing something, and students have to write enough paper, so I don't worry that, you know, oh, well, shouldn't you be making it right? It's like, they do that everywhere but speaking their thoughts and then being given the opportunity to clarify, you know, I can just say, all right, now, did you mean this? Or, well, could you take that and apply this here? And in a conversation, they actually can show me more in terms of, right, trying to demonstrate their understanding through the conversation than if I just read the words on the page, right? I put a little margin, did you think about this? Well, in the conversation, I can just ask them, did you think about this? And they either will say no or they're like, yeah. And right. so students end up loving that, that type of thing. And I carry that through upper level and it gives them the opportunity to speak, you know, apart from just hearing what I say or participating in a class, it's like, this is your time. So it's not like I want you to put in your head what was in mine. I want, I want what I'm teaching you to help you connect things that are already in your head and maybe add a few more so that in that way it serves you better, not, not me. Whether we realize it or not, we are doing some form of philosophy. We have some way of, of taking scripture and applying it to our lives. And Christian philosophy will say, well, even that method of taking scripture and pushing it into all these aspects of our lives, that needs to be controlled by Jesus Christ too. So I think that insistence on yeah, I'll use that word coherence again, saying what I read in scripture and how I live my life is determined by my philosophy. And Christian philosophy then sets itself, understanding what we hear from Jesus in Revelation and presses it into all these different aspects of, of our life. And I think that's, um, it's incredibly challenging and scary because how do you be obedient in, in those ways? But um, it's, I think, incredibly important, too.